What's going on guys, Connor Wells here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing safe and well. Hope you're having a great week so far. In this video, we are talking about how to record video for a live concert, a gig, a, a, a musical event, whether it's a rock band, a solo singer, a DJ. So we're gonna be talking about how to record the video for that. Let's roll the intro. <laughs> So welcome back to the channel guys, thank you very much for joining me for another video. Like I said in the intro, we're talking about how to record. This is the video side, not the audio, we'll talk about the audio in a different video. But we're talking about how to record a live gig, a, a concert, how to record a band whilst they're playing live, a, a, or just a solo singer whilst they're playing live, uh, the video aspect of it. I posted a video this week, it, it was completely different to anything that, like I've posted on the channel before. I got booked to film a concert and take some photos. I don't really like to date my videos or put a timestamp really too much on them because, you know, people could watch them back, you know, a few years from now and get that value. But uh, here in the UK, we've just been put into tier four sort of lockdown sort of things. So that gig that I actually ended up getting booked to film and take photos of ended up being the last gig of 2020, which was a real shame, but we went out with a bang. It was amazing atmosphere. Everybody was really, really safe when it came to sort of um, washing hands and staying two meters apart. It was a really, really well organized event. So big love to Club 85 in Hitchin, which is where the gig was being held. It was an amazing event and a great way to see out <laughs> 2020 with one last show. Now, I obviously was working that show. Obviously, I still managed to enjoy, you know, parts of the set and, and the, the, the acts playing, but ultimately I was working. So I had to stay professional, I had to, you know, make sure I was getting the shots, make sure I was really, really focused on what I wanted uh, to get shot wise and make sure I didn't miss, you know, any big moments during um, the free acts um, sets. That was a really hard phrase to say. So I'm going to be going over a few things that I think you may uh, need when it comes to preparing and actually filming um, a concert. So I'm going to be going over what sort of equipment you need, things to take into consideration um, prior to the gig and during um, the time you're filming the gig. So yeah, let's get into it. Now, I think it goes without saying, make sure you bring enough SD cards and most importantly as well, and I'm gonna really highlight um, this one, make sure you've got plenty of spare batteries. I seem to find uh, on cameras that I've used and you know, just my experience of, of, of filming gigs, the batteries die really, really quick um, when you're filming in music venues. The, the room's gonna be hot, the camera's constantly on and off, or it could just be rolling the entire time, depending on what sort of um, style of video you've been booked to film, whether it's the entire concert or you know, just making little highlight clips and just filming bits every now and then, which is what I was booked to do. I wasn't booked to film the entire concert. Concert, but make sure you bring enough batteries. I went through two batteries that night. Um, luckily I had two spare ones, but make sure you bring enough batteries because um, we were filming for a long time. And I say we, we'll get onto that in a minute. We were filming for a long time. You know, we were there sort of seven till 10. That's a, that's a good three hours of time, you know, we we're filming. So yeah, batteries are an absolute must have. They are a necessity in your camera bag when you're filming events like this. Now I touched on we because I actually booked a second shooter. I booked someone um, to actually operate um, another camera. I've got this camera here. Um, this was the rig that I was operating. We'll go on like into that a little bit later in the video. Um, but I booked someone to film on the camera I'm currently filming on now. Both Canon M50s, both set to the same settings, standard flat sort of color profile, auto white balance because the lighting changes all the time in gig venues. So I, I highly suggest using auto white balance. I know it's a bit of a cop out, but it works. And the, as you can see from the video playing now, the results actually look really, really nice. But why do I recommend you book or, or rope in like a second shooter? Because if you're roaming about with, you know, a, a gimbal and a rig, you, they, you know, you might be getting one side of the stage and the other half of the stage is, you know, completely out of shot. You know, you might miss like a really, really key moment. A bass player, you know, might flip the bass around their, their, their neck or something. You never know. It's, you know, I wouldn't advise doing that. I've seen plenty of videos where that goes completely wrong. 
but I highly recommend getting a second shooter because it covers all bases really. So I was roaming about, I was rigged up with um, this um, setup here and the second shooter was basically in charge of the static shots. So uh, she had a tripod, she was sort of, you know, framing up with the tripod and, and framing up, you know, handheld as well. Um, getting the wider shots, I was getting more on stage, getting the, you know, the closer up shots like this, um, whereas um, my second shooter was getting the wider shots, you know, the audience and, and basically the surroundings really. So highly recommend getting a second shooter when you're filming a live concert. Now we're gonna dive into equipment. Now gigs are very, very low light events. The light's constantly changing, it's very dim. Stage lighting also is incredibly hard to focus on. I basically left the cameras running on autofocus and it worked really well. There was only a couple of times where I, I struggled with the autofocus and missed focus a few times, but I could probably count it on one hand the amount of times that, that it missed focus. I have a camera with really, really good autofocus. These two Canon M50s are very, very reliable when it comes to their autofocus. Both of these cameras are equipped with Canon's incredible dual pixel autofocus, which is incredibly reliable and it works really well during filming the gig. Next bit of equipment you need is a lens that is very, very fast. Now, what do I mean by fast? I mean, you need a lens that has a very, very wide open aperture, something like an F1.8, an F2, F1.4, something really, really good for low light. Now, with my camera rig here, um, I was operating with the DJI Ronin SC, which is absolutely perfect for small body mirrorless cameras. Um, maybe even like an EOS R, I believe an EOS R5 and an R6 can actually fit on these, depending on what lens combination you've got. It can only fit a certain payload. If you want something heavier, get, an e, uh, get the Ronin S or the S2 or the SC2, you know, they can take bigger payloads. But I'm operating here on the DJI Ronin SC with a Canon M50 speed booster from Viltrox and a 50 millimeter lens. Now, as you can see on here, that is a nice bit of glass there and it is an F 1.8 lens with the speed booster that I've got attached here. It actually turns it into an F 1.2. I pretty much kept it on F 1.2 all night. You want it at the widest aperture open as possible because if you're, you know, if you're F 4 and low light, you're going to have to be boosting that ISO up really, really high. Your footage is going to look really grainy and noisy and that's not going to look the best. Whereas if your ISO could be at something like ISO 200 or 160, maybe even 300 or something, that will deliver a lot, lot better quality video. So. 50 millimeter lens. I operated it with the gimbal and a monitor. The monitor is currently sat on top of my camera now because I was I was rotating the monitor, getting different shots. So I had it up here at one point and pointing down so I could get, you know, behind the singer's head and shots of the crowd. Um, and then I had the low ones as well. So I, I had the camera sort of at a lower angle. So I needed to uh, move the monitor around a little bit um, so I could see, you know, what I was shooting. And this proved really, really good. If I was doing this sort of handheld, I don't think the footage would look as good because one, this camera here doesn't have IBIS. It has digital image stabilization, which is okay. But more importantly, this lens here, the Canon EF 50mm 1.8, doesn't have image stabilization built into the lens, which if you're doing handheld stuff could be a real problem. So I chose to operate it on the gimbal. My arms and shoulders were aching quite a lot after the three hours of filming, but it was worth it because it gave me the shots that I wanted and they were stable and smooth. Now, as you can see from the footage playing, the shots are all really, really stable. If that was handheld, it would look completely different. So definitely invest in a gimbal. This one is about 300 pounds here in the UK. Um, so it's, you know, some gimbals are very expensive, but for a, just a first gimbal, a DJI Ronin SC is a, a great starter option, um, particularly if you're in the mirrorless sort of camera sort of kit list. The next thing I suggest you bring with you when you're filming a gig uh, isn't actually camera related, it's actually clothing. So I dressed in all black. So I had black shoes, black skinny jeans, black shirt, um, black face mask on, because obviously Corona. So I had a black face mask on, hair tied back, black hat, because you want to blend in. You don't want to be, you know, obstructing the view. You don't want to be a distraction. People have paid to come and see a band that they love. They've come to see an act that they really enjoy. And if they see someone wearing a bright yellow SpongeBob t-shirt, roaming around the stage with a big, massive gimbal, uh, it's going to be quite distracting acting a little bit off-putting when it comes to the audience's sort of viewer um, perspective. So wear dark clothing, and when it comes to clothing as well, wear comfortable footwear, because you're up on your feet for, you know, I was up on my feet for about three hours, so um, I actually 
brought like a new pair of shoes um, mainly because my dog destroyed them so um, one nil dog right there but I bought a new pair of shoes they're quite comfy um, invest in good footwear because uh, you're up on your feet quite a lot and uh, I was on my feet quite a lot doing that roaming around the gym with the gimbal up on stage off the stage you know roaming around the audience uh, all sorts so yeah wear dark clothing wear comfortable footwear and you're gonna have a good time but that pretty much goes over it there's not much really that goes into filming live music just a very very fast lens steady shots are incredibly important you know if you're going for you know that more sort of handheld shot then maybe not go for a gimbal but if i wanted that sort of cinematic look to it so i i chose to operate with the gimbal because it gives it that smooth cinematic sort of flowy kind of style whereas if you're filming maybe like a, a rock band a metal band and you want that sort of handheld look where you're sort of swaying the camera about then that would work perfectly for you but i chose the cinematic style. If you got any value from this video, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as well. It lets the algorithm know that you enjoyed this video and I'd really appreciate it as well. Stay safe everybody and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.